though yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore our sometime sister, now our queen, have we with mirth and funeral, and with dirge and marriage, in equal scale weighing delight and dole, taken to wife. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord, I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy nighted color off, and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not ever seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his common that all lives must die, passing through nature into eternity. Ay, madame, it is common. If it be, why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madame? Nay, it is. I know not seems. I have that within which passeth show, these but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these mourning duties to your father, but you must know your father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, but to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness, tis unmanly grief. Come away. No two solid flesh would melt, thaw and resolve itself into a dew. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on it, fie! Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but two months dead, nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this, Hyperion to a satyr so loving to my mother that he might not beteem the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth, must I remember? Oh, frailty, thy name is woman. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with my uncle. She married, almost wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your ladyship. I am glad to see you well, Horatio. The same, my master, and your poor servant, ever. My master, I came to see your father's funeral. <laughs> I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lady? In my mind's eye, Horatio. My lady, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lady, the king, your father. The king, my father? Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernardo, on their watch in the dead, vast, in middle of the night, and thus encountered a figure, like your father, appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Did you not speak to it? <laughs> by God, I did, but answer made it none. Hmm. It's very strange. Hold you the watch tonight? I will watch tonight, perchance we'll walk again. I warrant it will. So, fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. It was not well. Doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. My necessaries are embarked. Farewell. And, brother, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. For Hamlet, the trifling of her favor, holds it a fashion and a toy and blood, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting. No more. No more but so? Think it no more. Perhaps she loves you now. Fear it, Laertes, my dear boy and keep you in the rear of your affection. 
out of the sh out of the shot and danger of desire. Be wary then. Best safety lies in fear. Oh, fear me not. I stay too long, but here my mother comes. Yet here, Ophelia, aboard, aboard for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail and you are stayed for. There, my blessing with thee. And these few precepts in thy memory. Look thou character, give the thoughts no tongue. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. For loan oft loses both itself and a friend. So, and borrowing doles the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the day the night. Thou canst not be false to any man. Farewell, my blessing seasons me. Most humbly do I take my leave, my lady. Fair Laertes, and remember well what I have said to you. What is it? What has she said to you? So please you, something touching the Lady Hamlet. She hath me, madam, of late made me many tenders of her affection to me. Affection? Mary, I will teach you, think yourself a baby. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slander a moment of leisure as to give words or to talk to the Lady Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. The air bites shrewdly, it's very cold. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. Look, your honor, it comes. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Bring with thee heirs from heaven or blasts from hell. King, father, royal Dane, oh, answer me. I can do to go away with it, but do not go with it. It will not speak. Then will I follow it? Uh, do not, my lady. If he cries out, I'll follow thee. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go on no further. Mark me, I am thy father's spirit, doomed for certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. If thou didst ever dear father love, Oh, God. Revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul. Now, Hamlet, here, tis given out that sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. The serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul. My uncle? Aye, that insensuous, that adulterate beast. With the witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off there was from me. Brief let me be, sleeping within my orchard thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed heaven on in a vial, and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment. Thus was one, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at one dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. Most horrible. Bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But however, thou purest this act, taint not, thy, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother. Adieu. 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 Remember me. Remember thee. I, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Yes, by heaven, O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain. My lady, your honor. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is it? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. We will not. Sword in faith. My master, not I. Upon my sword. We have sworn, madame, already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Day and night, but this is wondrous strange. Therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. 
But come, let us go in together. The time is out of joint. No cursed spite that ever I was born to set right. Nay, come, let's go together. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. The need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation? I entreat you both to draw her pleasures and to gather so you may glean whether aught to us unknown afflicts her thus lies within our remedy. Good gentlemen, she has talked much of you. Both your majesty's might, by the sovereign power you have of us, Put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. But we both obey and here give up ourselves in the full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. I do think or else this brain of mine hunts not the trail of policy so sure as it hath to use to do that. I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. My liege and madame, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, why day is day, night is night, and time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Repent, I have a son, have well, he is still mine, who in his duty and obedience hath given me this. <clears throat> To the celestial and my soul's idol, the most beautified. Beautified, that's an ill phrase. Beautified, a vile phrase, but you shall hear it. Capes from Hamlet to him. Good, madame, stay a while, I will be faithful. Doubt the stars are fire, doubt the sun doth move. Doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh, dear Laertes, I am at ill with these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, most best, believe it, adieu. Thine evermore, most dear boy, whilst this machine is to her Hamlet. This, in his obedience, hath my son given me. But how hath she received love? Well, what do you think of me? No, I was round to work. And my young master, I thus bespeak. Lady Hamlet is a princess out of thy star. This must not be. And then I precepts gave him that he should lock himself from her resort, admit no messengers, receive no tokens. Which done, he took the fruits of my advice. And she, repulsed, a short tale to make, fell into the madness wherein she now raves. <laughs> and we all mourn for. <sighs> Do you think it is this? It may be very like. Very like. Uh, how may we try it further? You know, sometimes she walks four hours together here in the lobby. At such a time, I'll lose my son to her. Be you and I behind in a race then. Mark the encounter. We will try it. But look where the sadly, the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you both away. My honored lady. My most dear lady. My excellent good friends. Good ladies, how do you both? As the indifferent children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. What news? None, but the world's grown honest. Denmark's a prison. We think not so. But what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, master, no other occasion. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end? That you must teach me. What a piece of work is a man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculty,est in form and moving, how express and admirable. <sighs> man delights not me. To think, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the player shall receive from you? What players are they? Even those you were won't take such delight in the tragedians of the city. There are the players. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Elsinore. You are all welcome. We'll hear a play tomorrow. 
Dost thou hear me, old friend? Can you play the murder, Gonzago? Aye, my master. Aye, so God be with you. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. <laughs> I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. you by no drift of circumstance get from her why she puts on this confusion she does confess she feels distracted nor do we find her forward to be sounded did she receive you well most like a lady but with much forcing of her disposition now leave us for we have closely sent for hamlet hither that she is Poor by accident may hear of front laertes. We may of their encounter frankly judge and gather by her, as he is behaved, if it be the affliction of his love or no. I shall obey you. Be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep. No more, and by a sleep, to say we end the heartache in the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Ay, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Who would these fartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pith and moment with thus regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair nymph Laertes and thy horizons be all my sins remembered. My lady, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed, longed to re-deliver. I pray you, now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lady, you know well right you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich, their perfume lost. Take these again for the, to the noble mind. Rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lady. I did love you once. Indeed, my lady, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. I loved you not. I was the more deceived? Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant all, believe none of us. Go to, I'll no more on it, it hath made me mad. I say we will have no more marriages. Oh, what a noble mind is here overthrown, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh. Oh, woe is me to have seen what I've seen, see what I see.
go. Make you ready. How now, my lady? Will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, in that presently. What ho, Horatio? Here, sweet lady, at your service. Observe my uncle. Give a heedful note. Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. You are merry, my lady. For us and for our tragedy, here stooping to your clemency, we beg your hearing patiently. Full thirty times has Phoebus' cart gone round Neptune's salt wash and Tullus orb the ground. Since love our hearts unite communal in most sacred bands. So many journeys may the sun and moon make us again count or our love be done. But woe is me, you are so sick of late. Faith, I must leave thee love and shortly too. Oh, confound the rest. Such love must needs be treason in my breast. In second husband, let me be accursed. None wed the second, but who killed the first. So think that thou wilt no second husband wed, but die thy thoughts when thy first lord is dead. Nor earth to me give food, nor heaven light, if once a widow ever I be wife. Madame, how like you this play? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. This is Lucianus, nephew to the king. Thoughts black, hands apt, drugs fit, and time agreeing. Confederate season, else no creature seeing, now mixture rank of midnight weeds collected. He poisons him in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. You shall see anon how the murderer gets the love of Gonzago's wife. The king rises. What, fright of the false fire? How fares my lord? <clears throat> Give o'er the play. Give me some light. Go away. Lights, lights, lights. Oh, good Horatio. I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pound to perceive. She will come straight. Look you, lay home to her. Tell her her pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace has screened and stood between much heat and her. I'll silence me even here. Pray you, be round with her. Mother, 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 I warrant you, fear me not, withdraw, I hear her coming. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rood, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother's wife, and, would it were not so, you are my mother. <coughs> How now, a rat? Help! Help! Dead for a ducat, dead. Oh, I am slain! Oh, me, what hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is it the king? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed this is. A bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? Aye, t'was my word. Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. What have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sets a blister there, makes marriage vows as false as Dicer's oaths. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers enter mine ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. Confess yourself to heaven, repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Forgive me, this my virtue. O oh, Hamlet, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part and live the purer with the other half. 
Come, ma'am, to draw an end with you. Good night, mother. Where is the beauteous majesty of Denmark? How now, Laertes? How should I, your true love, know from another one? By her cockle hat and staff, and her sandal shoon. Alas, sweet boy, what imports this song? Say you, nay, pray you, Mark. She is dead and gone, lady. She is dead and gone. At her head a grass-green turf, at wheels a stone. Alas, look here, my lord. Larded all with sweet flowers, which be wept to the grave, did not go with true love showers. How do you, pretty boy? Well, God, I'll do. Follow him close. Give him good watch, I pray you. Where is my mother? Dead. B but not by him. How came she dead? I'll not be juggled with. I am guiltless of your mother's death and am most sensibly in grief for it. Oh, heat, dry up my brains. Here's Rosemary. Uh, that's for remembrance. Pray you, love, remember. There's fennel for you and, and, and columbines. There's rue for you. We may call it herb of Sundays. Oh, you must wear your rue with a difference. There's a daisy. I would love to give you some violets, but they withered all when my mother died. They say she made a good end. Do you see this, oh God? Tread upon another's heel, so fast they follow. Your brother drowned, Ophelia. Drowned? Oh, where? There is a willow grows a slant a brook that shows his hoar leaves in the glassy stream. There, with fantastic garlands, did he come of crow flowers, nettles, daisies, and long purples. There, on the pendant boughs, his cornet weeds clambering to hang on and envious silver broke went down his weedy trophies and himself fell into the weeping brook like a creature native and endued unto that element but long it could not be till that his garments heavy with their drunk pulled the poor wretch from his melodious lay to muddy death drowned drowned too much of water hast thou poor boy and therefore I forbid my tears, but yet it is our trick. Nature, her custom holds. Let shame say what it will. When these are gone, the woman will be out. Adieu, my lady. Peace, who comes here? Your ladyship is right welcome. Thank you, madame. Sweet lady, if your ladyship were at leisure, I should impart a thing to you from his majesty. You are not ignorant of what excellence is Ophelia. The king, sir, hath wagered with her six Barbary horses against the which she has imponed, as I take it, six French rapiers and poniards with their assigns as girdle, hangers, and so on. The king, sir, hath laid that in a dozen passes between yourself and her, she shall not exceed you three hits. She hath laid on twelve for nine, and it would come to immediate trial if your ladyship would vouchsafe the answer. If your mind is like anything, obey it. I will forestall their repair hither, and say you are not fit. Not a whit. We defy augury. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be now, tis not to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now, yet it will come. The readiness is all. 
since no man has aught of what he leaves, what is it to leave betimes? Let be. Come, Hamlet, come, and take this hand from me. Give me your pardon. I have done you wrong. Let my disclaiming from a purposed evil free me so far in your most generous thoughts. I am satisfied in nature. I embrace it freely. And will this sister's wager frankly play? Give us the foils. Come on. Give them the foils, young Ostrich. Hamlet, you know the wager? This is too heavy. Give me another. Come on. Come on, my lady. One. No. Judgment. A hit. A very palpable hit. Well, again. Stay. Give me drink. Hamlet, this pearl is thine. Here's to thy health. I'll play this bout first. Set it by a while. Come. Another hit, what say you? A touch and a touch, I do confess. Gertrude, do not drink. I will, my lord. I pray you pardon me. Oh, it is the poisoned cup. It is too late. I dare not drink yet, madame, by and by. Come for the third, Ophelia, you but dally. I got you now. Look to the queen there, ho. They bleed on both sides. How is it, my master? How is Sophelia? I am justly killed with mine own treachery. How does the queen? She swoons to see them bleed. No, 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 the drink. Oh, my dear Hamlet, the drink, the drink, I am poisoned. Villainy, ho, let the door be locked. Treachery, seek it out. It is here, Hamlet. Hamlet, thou art slain. In thee there is not a half hour of life left. The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. Lo, here I lie, never to rise again. Thy mother's poisoned, I can no more. The king, the king's to blame. The point envenomed, then venom to thy work. He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Change forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Heaven make free of it. I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen, adieu. Horatio, I am dead. Thou livest, report me and my cause aright to the unsatisfied. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet princess. In flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. And let me speak to the yet unknowing world how these things came about. So shall you hear of carnal, bloody, and unnatural acts of accidental judgments, casual slaughters, deaths put on by cunning enforced cause, and in this upshot, purposes mistook, fallen on the inventor's head. All of this I can truly deliver. <laughs>